belt Stitches Syringe Antibiotic gel Drain Forceps Laser Ultrasound Welcome back everybody, this time with another a new game, the next game on a list or something, it's called, it's called Trauma Center, Second Opinion, it's a, yeah I finally got the Wii U one, I got the Wii U switched on this time, I was able to do it. So, Trauma Center bought this game before the pandemic started in my local video game store that used to exist before the pandemic, right? Um, yeah. So I actually had it recorded, but somehow I couldn't upload it. There was, uh, some kind of... I don't know. I'm trying it again. I'm, I'm guessing, like, I don't know, something went wrong. I'm having issues again with, you know, with browsers and, you know, service providers and shit. Issues. Everybody wants me you know, to like, use their products, right? I don't know, you know, I, I don't profit from it, it's like companies profit from it if I use stuff, I'm like a big, it's like I'm a big promoter, right, you know what I'm saying, I'm a big promoter, and uh, so anyway, back to this game, uh, this game is about, you know, the Wii playing it on the Wii U, like I said, this game is about, you know, the Wii and the nunchuck. You know, the Wii remote and the nunchuck. This is a game, I think, I think the predecessor was on the Game Boy, how do you call it, Three Nintendo 3DS? I think that's when the first part came out, so this is a sequel to it, on the Wii, the home console, that's how they, <coughs> that's how they pronounced it, or announced it. Um, yeah, so you're, you're like a doctor, emergency room doctor, and you gotta do like, you know, this shit with the Wii remote and stuff, and it has, oh shit, what's this, it has like a story and stuff, so yeah, it's pretty cool, but it's also pretty hard, it can get really, really difficult, I'm playing on hard by the way, right, it can get really, really difficult, stressy, so, I don't know, they, so you fail, gonna fail at some point you're gonna fail and you're gonna have to retry and then you're gonna have to retry again and then you're gonna have to retry again and retry again and it doesn't matter how much you you you, you know how much how angry you get right it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter this game is I'm not saying like this game is a one-to-one -one operation simulator but this game is basically trying to tell you you know that you can't simply you know you can't simply conduct an operation Right, the surgery, and be angry and shit, or happy, you know, and, and laugh and stuff. Like I'm trying to do it, but you know, I always find myself failing. So you know, you gotta be highly concentrated. You gotta be highly focused. You gotta shut the fuck up, right? You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be cold as a machine. That's basically the point in this game to you know perfect your stupid shit here, right? And but basically be cold as a machine, right? Because, I don't know man, that's just the way it is. So we begin the game again, start the episode. Oh, hospital! Wait. Alright, here we go. Episode number, prologue. This is Hope Hospital, located in downtown Angeles Bay. Since its inception, Hope has selflessly served the community. One of the newest doctors here is still in need of guidance, but he's 
strives to improve out of an earnest desire to help people, Dr. Derek Stiles will soon come to realize his full potential. Standard procedure. Alright, so I've been playing up until here. Uh, yeah, I had, I had a couple of issues. So, so we're gonna have to play up, up until here, five singing the blues, and then this video will be finished. Right, here we go. Chapter 1, Dr. Styles, Standard Procedure. Hope Hospital Consultation Room. The patient has been moved to the pre-op area. Mary Futon, age 39, Hope Hospital's veteran surgical assistant. She's kind and well-liked, so nobody mentions she tends to ramble too much. The injury is located on his forearm and he's still fully conscious. We should be receiving blood test results from the lab any minute now. It looks worse than it is. He's not in any real danger. You might say he got lucky. Dr. Greg Casal, the head of Hope Hospital's surgical department. He's not easily rattled, but he's strict and expects perfection from his subordinates. You'll be operating, Derek. I will? Derek Stiles, age 26, an inexperienced surgeon and the story's main character. He just completed his residency and accepted a position at Hope Hospital. I was just about to start my round, so worry about that later, you're not an intern anymore. Hurry up and prep for the operation room. This is a simple extraction procedure. There's nothing to worry about. Just take your time, stay calm and keep it steady. You should be able to handle this on your own by now. Begin the operation! Laxerations and foreign objects in upper right break brachium requires removal of the foreign objects and suturing of any wounds. Let's begin the briefing. Our patient Kevin Turk is just arrived in an ambulance. He lost control of his motorcycle and crashed through a glass door. He received a number of lacerations which have begun to hemorrhage. There are glass fragments lodged here in his right forearm. Our cosmetic surgeon is out at a medical society meeting. But you should be able to handle the cinch stitching, it's fairly straightforward. There are two main objectives in this operation. Surgery and relaxer lacerations, extract fragments of glass from underneath the patient's skin. Be thorough and try your best not to leave any scars. Starting the operation. Okay, begin the operation. Here we go. So the game is pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Alright, here we go. Let's begin. Let's begin operation. We should start with those observations. Take the stitches. Suture in a zigzag pattern. Zig, 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 zig. Okay. Good work. Of course, it's only basic surgery skill. Now, same thing with other. You did very well. Well done. The next one we're taken care of. Next, take your forces. Be mindful of the direction. Yes. has now been extracted. We need to take care of those smaller wounds now. Take the antibiotic gel. That's the one gently applied on the wounds. That's good. It looks like you're starting to get the hang of it. Amazing, isn't it? Come a long way. This gel can actually cure small injuries immediately. In the past, cure all ointments were just gimmicks and scams. But someday, somebody finally created a real one. Oops, I shouldn't be talking so much. Let's continue. Some glass shards are embedded in the patient's arm as well. We'll need to extract those. Make an incision in his upper epilithium. Don't forget to disinfect the area. Yeah, yeah. I wish they would talk so I don't have to. Let's meet. move on. No, we can just Remember to be careful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. oh man, this is really... yeah. Here we go. Doctor Styles. So you can't let them get infected. It's forceps. Oh, oh! Doctor? Ooh. Treatment complete. Alright, close it up. Dr. Styles? Stitches in the floor. Make sure the stitches aren't too wide or too narrow. Yeah. Let's move on. Right. Disinfect. 
So you learn the basics now, right? About how to treat the and shit. So, right. so after we finish, we close this shit, we stitch it and disinfect it. Always use the bandage. Good job, Dr. Styles. Make sure you review what we went over today when you have the chance. Yeah, we did it. So that was the introduction. Really nice. <laughs> Time bonus. Special bonus. Cool. Rank C. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Glad this game doesn't have no trophy system. See? You're catching on quickly. That wasn't so hard, was it? I couldn't have done it without my lovely assistant. I can definitely see improvement, but flirting isn't everything. Seriously, though. Keep practicing and you'll do just fine. Alright, we're learning the ropes. Learning the ropes. Judging from the MRI, MRI, the tumor is isolated in his stomach. It's benignant, but you should be prepared for anything. Any questions, Dr. Styles? Huh? Uh, yeah, I'm fine, thanks anyway. Are you even listening? I know you're stressed, but this is just so happens to be your job. Are you getting enough sleep? You need at least six hours a night. I'm sure they went over that in med school. These patients are depending on you. <clears throat> Derek, don't forget our follow-up appointment with Mr. Jenkins this afternoon. Have you read the report? I haven't, actually. You need to shape up. This is real life. We aren't playing games. You've been here three years, Derek. We shouldn't still have to babysit you. This might be grounds to open an investigation. The impaired medical and social development of Dr. Derek Stiles. Harsh, cut me some slack, Mary. <clears throat> You're not a resident doctor anymore, Stiles. You know that. By the way, Mary, I spoke with Dr. Hoffman. Thank you very much. Wait, you spoke with the director? About what? Don't worry, it's none of your business. It's a personal matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Are you going on vacation or something? I wonder... I wouldn't mind a nice long cruise myself. Lounging in the sun, the sea stretching, eating lots of fruits. Okay, okay, that's enough. We have an operation to perform. Ah, uh, yeah, ouch, my head. Confirmed at the surface of the stomach, it should be removed before it becomes malignant. <clears throat> Today we need to exercise a tumor in the patient. Excise, I'm sorry. Today we need to excise a tumor in the patient's distal stomach. Two years ago, tests indicated that it was a sm it was small and benign. However, it's grown rapidly and started to hemorrhage. At this rate, it might become malignant. After talking with Mr. Lowry, we've decided to remove it. There is one objective in his operation. Excise and remove the tumor in the patient's distal stomach. That is all. But you'll need to remove the tumor using the Powell procedure. First, drain the tumor's cytoplasm to decrease its size. Then, once you excise it, the cells can't metasta met metastasize, resulting in a smaller incision. There seems to be a trend towards this type of removal. It's a good idea for you to learn it. Now begin the operation. Stay calm and keep it steady. Starting the operation. Understood. Let's begin operation. See, at first I was like, okay, I gotta laser it away, but no. But yeah, we get to cut people open, right? <laughs> we get to cut Let's them open. Let's begin. You've done it before, yes. We gotta cut them open, right? Every fucking time. We gotta cut somebody open. Go. Where is it? So we need to use Dr. Styles. ultrasound. Spiles are dropping. Right. Spiles are dropping. That's good. Dr. Styles. Styles. I'm keeping it up for as However, yesterday just reached the patient's lower stomach. Ultrasound. Yes. I know. See? It's simple. Now we cut. Dr. Styles. There we go. It's pretty big. Looks like we did this just in time. As I'll explain earlier, we'll be using a power procedure. We drain it. Keep it steady. That's good. All right, now we cut it out. We need to ooze if we don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. You did very well. Take it. That's good. And then we take this. We need to apply a synthetic membrane to stop the bleeding. This is what I forgot in the, in the beginning. Grab a membrane with the forceps and place it on. Dr. Styles. That's good. Now let's affix the 
the synthetic membrane for a supply elevator. Okay. Go! Treatment That's complete. Enough gel. The membrane is beginning to meld with the tissue. It's made of protein, so there's no chance of tissue rejection. I think it's blended in nicely. It should heal up. Now finish the resume. Okay, we finished. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Go. Good job, Dr. Styles. All right. That's how you uh, remove a tumor in this game, right? Special bonus. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Wait. Nice work, Derek. You really took your time and did things right. Just remember that the patient safety always comes first. You're getting better every day. Keep up the good work. <clears throat> Learning the whoops. Farewell. <clears throat> oh, hospital. So we'll be playing this game now. It's gonna get really hard. Oh, hospital, nurse station. And so, since my husband's been relocated to a different office, I'll be leaving Hope Hospital effective immediately. I'm really going to miss this place and all the friends I made here, but I promise to continue my work as a nurse wherever life takes me. People taught me that nothing is more satisfying than helping patients. It was a pleasure to have you on staff, Mary. Good luck with the new job. I can't believe you're leaving. He's so, so sudden. How are you going to get by without her, Derek? Actually, Derek's the one reason I was a little hesitant to leave. Even, I even spoke with my husband about it. I told him there was a kid here who depends on me. He asked me how long I'd been working in pediatrics. <laughs> Ah, come on, I'm not that bad. Here we go. Is Nurse Futon you still here? Oh, hello, Dr. Hoffman. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Robert Hoffman, age 62, the director and founder of Hope Hospital. He used to be a renowned surgeon, but then retired to work in management. No, of course not. I came to say goodbye since I won't be around tomorrow. Thank you for your many years of dedicated service. You're a fantastic nurse. You probably are the best. On behalf of our entire staff, I'd like to say thank you. Oh, sir, the pleasure was all mine. I wish there was some way I could thank you for this opportunity. Well, you're not going to stop nursing, are you? If you continue to help people, that will be thanks enough. Of course, sir. Helping people is my life. It's just... I wish I could stay and learn from you a little longer. Don't be modest. You already know everything I can teach you. I'm afraid Dr. Kazal surpassed me as a surgeon long ago. Dr. Hoffman. Good luck with your new job. Don't be a stranger, alright? At any rate, I have other matters to attend to. If you'll excuse me. I wish I could have seen Dr. Hoffman in action more often. But he hasn't performed any operations since that incident. Derek, let's discuss the next patient. Yes, sir. This will be my last procedure at Hope. Don't let me down, Derek. Okay. Multiple tumors confirmed in the pancreas. They may lead to a loss of stamina, so immediate removal is highly recommended. Yesterday's procedure went very smoothly. I want you to handle Mr. Spence's operation today. It's another tumor excision. Just be careful. There's more than one this time. Make sure you don't miss any. This is the last time I'll be assisting you, Dr. Styles. If you can handle this operation, I'll feel much better about leaving. Oh, I didn't mean to upset you. I got something in my eye. But wake up, Dr. Styles. The only person you should be thinking about during the operation is the patient. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Let's review the main objective of today's operation. Excise and remove all tumors from the patient's pancreas. Now think back to yesterday's procedure and begin. Starting the operation. Here goes, let's begin the operation. First, the patient's life is in your hands. Let's begin. Let's begin operation, Dr. Stiles. All right, Jesus faked. Cut. Cool. All right. Go. Good luck. Pancreas memory is inflamed, so we need anti-anti-inflammatory. Let's begin. 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 Let's
Let's move on. Swelling is down. Move on to the tumors. Three. Perform ultrasound. Excise. Drain. Just two more. Thank you. Dr. Styles. Test, you're really improving, can you tell? You seem really focused today, I guess. My work here is done. Whew, alright. I can't read what she's saying, right? I gotta concentrate on this stupid shit. There you go. Bad? Oh, <laughs> fuck, man. Stitching, Jerry. Oh, my stomach. Blah. Pancreas falling out of his stomach and shit. Yeah, yeah, alright. You did a great job, Derek. It looks like I have nothing to worry about. You're going to make it. Please continue using your abilities to help the people of Angelus Bay. Oh, farewell. Wait a minute, no, what was it? Nursing. Was it, was it this? So, we all felt you deserved a special gift of appreciation. Thank you for 18 years of dedicated service, Miss Fulton. Excuse me. I don't really know what to say. I'm a little embarrassed. Miss Fulton was more than a great nurse. She looked after us as well. She will be missed. Are you sure you're not glad to be free of my nagging? What are you talking about? I'm just worried Dirk's going to start coming to work late again. You're the one who kept him in line, Mary. Ah, jeez, I'm standing right here, guys. You don't need to worry, I'll be fine without Mary's help. I may be young, but I'm still a doctor. That's good to hear. So no more sobbing phone calls from you, huh? What? I wasn't crying. I'm just teasing, Derek. You've grown so much since you joined us, and I'm proud of you. Work hard, and you'll surpass even Dr. Kazal one day. Don't forget that I believe in you. No, 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 she isn't here yet. Is something wrong? They must be talking about my replacement. Since I'm leaving, you're going to need a new assistant. I was supposed to train her this afternoon, but HR assured me she's very reliable. I hope everything's okay. Here she is. Sorry, I'm late. Here she is. Miss Harry Blonde Girl. I'm Angie Thompson, the new nurse. I'll be starting here tomorrow. Angie Thompson, age 21. It appears she's Hope Hospital's newest employee. Angie is part German, born into a very intelligent German family, or something like that. And she has long blonde hair, and it's just hanging around. She's young and hairy, but already heard her intimate <laughs> I can't believe this stupid shit, right? So again, I have to address it, right? So you have the nurse here, she has blonde hair, and because of the, the, why I'm, you know, explicit, explicably addressing it is because that people with blonde hair have more follicles than other people who not have blonde hair, right? Not as well. So, you know, like... So her... So the hair loss is greater with her, right? So there, she has greater hair loss than other people because she has so many hair follicles. And so you... you so without her knowing, with, with her hair just hanging around like that, right, the dropping rate of hair is just big. So she leaves a lot of hair behind her, right? You would 
just have to, you know, take a cleaning machine, you know what I mean, and you, and use it, and then you would see how much fucking hair is being sucked in by the machine, right? Including hers, right? So what I'm trying to say is, like, compared to, you know, this other nurse, you know, look at the hair. Is Mary Futon here? So her hair is hanging loose, it's hanging in her face, it's hanging down behind her back, right? You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it seems like uncombed, even, right? So it's just hanging loose, ready to fall off, right? I'm ready to discuss protocols and procedures now. And, you know, she's like an operation room nurse, right? A surgical nurse. And now look at her. Look at her hair. Everything is fucking straight. You know what I'm saying? It's short. It's kept short. It's like, you know, it's above her shoulders. It's kept short. Um, it's not hanging. Nothing seems to be hanging. Everything is tight. You know what I mean? That is how a nurse is actually supposed to run around in the hospital if, you know, when if showing her hair. You know, you can't just run around with, like a caveman, inside, you know, this medical facility, and especially in emergency rooms, right? You can't just run around like a caveman Think like, you know what I'm saying? This is just, and now, especially during the COVID time, right? What did I say? <clears throat> what did I say? Right, especially during the COVID time. I mean, let's not forget, here, even our hair is made of proteins. Does that make any sense? Yes, it is. Our hair is has DNA in it, right? Our hair in includes or involves DNA, our DNA, right? And, you know, you can basically, you can uh, recognize if someone has taken drugs by taking a hair test. And, you know, for example, whatever what, right? It could be alkaloids, or how you call it in English, right? And, you know, alkaloids are, are nitrogen, are, are, Proteins, okay, it's proteins. Our hair is made of proteins. So, you know, our virus, uh, the, our virus, the coronavirus, you know, is encased in a protein shell. So we could easily, like, latch one or, or, or get stuck, it's like that get stuck into some loose hair, couldn't it? Yeah, you, you get my point? And then you have Miss Caveman here. Wow, she's a nurse? Isn't she a little too hairy? What's that now? Look at her, man. That's... Just, yeah, German. <laughs> she's part German, part hairy, yeah. Whoa, nothing, part... On the way here, I saw a man get hit by a car as he was crossing the street. I took him to a nearby clinic and stayed until they, until they transferred him to St. Francis Hospital. Of course the paperwork took forever to fill out, so yeah. Sounds like you had a rough morning. Well, don't you worry about being late. I completely understand. Excuse me, has Miss Thompson arrived yet? There's someone on the line from St. Francis Hospital. This must be about the patient. Please excuse me. She certainly is something else. Looks like I'm leaving you in hairy hands. What do you think, Derek? All right, this mission. Here we go. Saint Francis Hospital. From overseas. Saint Francis Hospital conference room. The patient Alan Chambers is suffering multi-fragmentary fractures in his right forearm. He was rushed here as soon as the injury occurred, thanks to a nurse who witnessed it. Judging by the x-ray, this one could give us some trouble. But I'm sure Dr. Weaver will be able to fix him up, good as new. I appreciate the confidence, but you know this is no big deal. I haven't let a patient down yet, have I? No Zomi Weaver, age 29, a Japanese surgeon who came to America to get her, uh, to visit, uh, to get her, hair, her hair dressed on an exchange program. Since transferring from her original hospital in Okinawa, She's gained quite a reputation, thanks to her hair. Style. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, that's so whack, man. I can't believe this shit, really. Alan Chambers, isn't he a famous screenwriter? I think it's the same guy. I would, I would certainly explain the media circus gathering outside. Hey, maybe they'll want to interview us. Or Dr. Weaver, anyway. She's probably the most photogenic doctor here. Ha 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 ha. She's the one with the longest hair, yeah. I definitely don't need that kind of attention. If they're looking for a press conference, the head surgeon is welcome to take my place. You're too modest, Dr. Weaver. She's really put our hospital on the map. Though, we have patients coming from all over. I'd say that exchange program was the best thing to happen to St. Francis. He has sex cells. I'm surprised your hospital was willing to let you go, doctor. <laughs> You're giving me too much credit. I haven't even been here for a full year. We're getting a little sidetracked, I think. <laughs> Let's proceed with the operation, shall we? Good luck, doctor. in Okinawa. Alright, it's pretty heavy. Multi-fragmentary fractures in patients' forearm. There are also seem to be internal hemorrhaging. Treat bleeding, then rebuild the broken bones. Let's see, time of dictation, 3.48 a.p.m. The patient's name is Alan Chambers. He has a serious fracture in his right arm. As for the x-ray results, fragments of the bones seem to be scattered and I see hemorrhaging. That said, I will be approaching this operation with three objectives. Collect fragments of his radius and Set the ulna properly for healing. Return the fragments to the original location and rebuild the patient's radius in ulna. I anticipate a smooth procedure. I'm starting the operation. It's time to get started. I don't know what the fuck of ulna is, man. The ulna. Let's begin. I can't read right now. I have to operate. I'm opening him up. Here we go. Hmm. What's going on? Oh, we gotta suck it. Drain. Next. Leave it to me. Collect fragments. Woo! Ah. Yeah. Wait a minute. It looks like Ray is twisted the wrong direction. I'll use my forceps. But first, give him the shit. There we go. I, shit, I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen. Like, please. There we go. Move the bone fragment below, yes. Yeah, yeah. Alright, give me this shit. Okay. Uh, I think it was here. I see. So, oh, there's so, so Oh, that's not right! What? I didn't. I didn't. Nothing happened. Oh, you mean it, it fell down? Are you trying to tell me? Oh my god, I'm shaking. Shit, man. While I'm operating. It's fucked up. No. Something isn't right. I thought I found all the fragments, but the ulna still isn't connecting properly. There's probably still a fragment I haven't found yet. If I use the ultrasound, I should be able to find it. Use ultrasound. 
Ah, there's where you'd be hiding. Take this shit. Oh yeah, I gotta cut it open. That seems to be all of them. I should apply some NWI to the other side. Oh, there's one more. fell on the floor or something? I don't know. Yes, of course. I don't know, man. They expect you to be like some fucking... St. Francis Hospital conference room. Another amazing operation, Dr. Weaver. I think we all learned a thing or two. <laughs> oh, they, uh, because I dropped the bone? Well then, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Interesting. I always thought American doctors were more concerned about golf than their patients. But everyone here is so kind, they accepted me as one of their own immediately. Only because they don't know the truth. Uh, phone call, oh, it's them. This is Weaver. A procedure on Sunday? It's kind of sudden, don't you think? Uh, not that I confuse or anything, yeah, I'll be there. Alright, that was it. So, singing blues, real doctor, life or death, don't this is where I left off after the next video. Striving for Asclepius.